You've got a problem in Football Manager, and I know how to fix it, including one of you who is going to quit your save unless I can save it for you. So no pressure at all. But we start with Pitahui at Optic Rathanel. Hello, I just got promoted to the second Bundesliga. Finally have some money to spend in the transfer budget and currently resisting the urge to just swap out my entire team. What positions would you recommend I improve, be it with loans or transfers? And which players should I keep? Also, the tactics can't be changed. They are this way for extra challenge. Okay, well, immediately, I know we have somebody that likes pain. What are these tactics? I mean, that's not that, that is a very offensive tactic, obviously, but it's not like a huge problem. It's not going to cause problems for you. So I don't think that that's going to be a huge issue with no instructions and on balance. So I kind of get the idea of the whole strategy to begin with. If you've watched this, you probably know where I'm going to go. I'm just going to take a look at the general level of the team relative to the competition that you're going up against. And honestly, in January, so we've got accurate data. It doesn't look like your team is all too bad. You actually just completed your promotion season. Your excellent performance, first of all, congratulations. But you're wondering who to swap out and what you should do with your team. Which means we're just going to call this what it is. And eyeball exercise and i'm just going to tell you whether these guys are able to play at a second bundesliga level that can get you into the bundesliga probably not two hours later your best player in my opinion is neboja stamatovich i think this guy is a super stud uh he's totally a guy that could play for a bad bundesliga team right now he's great i think everybody else that i'm looking at on your team is somebody that could conceivably be replaced you've got great mentality in your team but at this point in the second bundesliga all you need to be doing is scouring end of contract players you should be in scouting and player search looking at players with expired contracts finding good ones scouting for more sorting for guys that have international appearances or major bundesliga appearances or something bringing those guys in and getting a senior affiliate because you're a professional club and if you're a professional club you should be able to get a senior affiliate really effectively but there's almost no one on your team that's not replaceable the problem is there's only going to be certain players that have the opportunity presented for you to be able to sign them this is always the situation you could look at your whole team and say well you could improve this but who is going to be available you have need and you have opportunity so create all of the channels like a senior affiliate or your intense end of contract scouting so that when those players present themselves, you're actually able to find them and take advantage. Also, love the fact that you're from Vanuatu in game. Nice touch. And if I may, just like word of warning or caution, the most important players for the success of this formation you're being forced to play with, those two midfielders. Mike Novak Rose is like, eh, on the line, but this guy, Darren Kozabigurnov, which look, it's awesome. He's from Kazakhstan. He's probably not, he, who am I kidding? He's definitely not good enough to play in this position at the next level and get you where you want to go. So you need to make sure your midfield is great and you have depth there. These guys are going to get exhausted. Next. We have from York City, or he's coaching York City. Currently, my team is very good. I'm particularly proud of the business uh, to get Cesar Tamayo. However, looking at the future, I don't have an array of talent to transition to a new generation. I'm just not finding it. I've followed all your scouting videos as best I can, but I don't seem to find the best players before they move to a big club. Why aren't I catching them? Very simple. Scouting is just different on Football Manager 22 than it has been in years past. It's just different. I recently made this video, which is linked up there i think i got the corner right is it there above the image of the video where i detail a new type of scouting and i'm going to tell you about it here in less detail go to youth national teams and look at players whose age profiles stick out that's all you need to do it is more effective than any other type of scouting you're going to do that i'm dead serious go to kazakhstan look at the national team and go oh this dude's 18. If only he was real, then I'd do something, right? There's more to it, so watch that video for that sort of thing. But if you're not finding those wonder kids before they get the big clubs, it's because you're not looking at youth national teams. You're scouting, even if you're following these videos I made about scouting, it, it, it's still not going to be as fully effective as it has been in years past. Why do I keep hitting this freaking thing? Honestly, I saw this save in the explanation and I was like, oh, well, I'll use this as like an opportunity to talk about this new scouting method that's better than the other scouting methods that we've learned in the game. But 
actually honestly this save didn't need any saving at all you just wanted to hear me read your name and try and kind of trick me into it so that's why we muted and blurred your name out earlier ha <laughs> got you you think you're smarter than me you think you're smarter than me or something you see the size of this forehead all right it's not just good for running through doors okay there's at least three brain cells in there man nice try i'll be honest though this is the type of save that happens if you subscribe to this channel so if you're not subscribed make sure you do that so you can eventually do this next we have Mikel Understore with the Caledonian Braves. The team's at a point where we can consistently qualify for the Champions League. However, my chairman is always accepting transfer offers for my top players. One of the most frustrating positions to be in in the game, even though they are nowhere close to my evaluation. Of course, I've lost multiple star players for extremely cheap because of this, and I'm in the process of losing my striker, Chris McKenzie. The money I get from these sales also isn't enough to properly replace the players either. Any ideas? Yes. So first of all, what the f*** is this competitions page? Why the heck are there like nine competitions in Scotland? Okay? The league's not good enough to have nine competitions. Seven. Compet I don't like math. Also, congratulations on winning the league in back-to-back -back years. You have dragged the Scottish Premiership up to a top 10 league in Europe over my beloved Admiral Bundesliga. If you want to watch me try and win the Champions League out of that league, you can follow me on Twitch down in the description. We love hanging out live, playing football manager, and just generally talking like this, except you can talk back. However, here on the videos, it's like a monarchy or something. I just... Wait. I will throw your tea in the harbor if you ever say anything like that. Anyways, you're losing players for cheap and you're losing players for cheap because your overall balance is $13 million. I've had some bad news for you. You're going to lose more. Here's the good news and the honestly painful part. I'm looking at your boy, Chris McKenzie. You're not getting terrible value for him, right? You could have gotten 30. You might have been able to get 40 on an amazing day. But to be perfectly honest, you're not a big enough club to be able to get that amount of money. Your club reputation's three stars. My club reputation in Austria is four stars and we can't sell guys for the same value that we think we should get. The key to long-term financial success in football manager is selling guys from progressively more and more money. You have to keep the factory going. I know this is gonna hurt. He's Scottish, eight goals and 11 caps for Scotland. That is a little deceiving though because he's not actually that good. I mean, he's pretty good. He's a darn solid player, right? But he is not worth any more than like 35 40 million at the top so 21 not bad i've been screwed a lot harder than this i feel like and i totally understand in my save we sold a guy named pavel ilko and when we let him go it was 12 million dollars and we thought he was this world beating wonder kid turns out his career ends up you know, he's like valued at $12 million. I think Chris McKenzie's very much going to be like that. The only way to overcome your board selling players is to make more money. And sometimes you have to go through these painful sales in order to make that more money. In order to sell players for more money, you need to win. Your reputation needs to go up. Another thing you can do to raise your reputation is get affiliate clubs, specifically in major countries, like China, Japan, the United States, in order to raise your international reputation. And over time, that will go up. But right now, you've only been in the Champions League one time. You got to the first knockout round and lost to Inter. That's good. But you need to progress in a five-year sense in order to raise your reputation, sell players for more money. Most importantly, just just keep getting that money. If you stay on the same course you're on, you will get there. If you look at my Florids door for save, you are about five to six years behind that curve where all of a sudden you're able to sell guys for 60, 70, 80 million dollars. But McKenzie is not that guy. This guy, Herman Columbo, you sold him for 14 million dollars. I'll be honest, if he was on my Floridsdorfer team, I might be able to get 20, 25 million, but it's not like crazy amounts more money than you're making right now. You just, you're gonna have to continue to sign and replenish these guys because that's the game. The first wall of alleged wonder kids you sign isn't gonna win you the Champions League. It's like the 10th that you sign and a few guys happen to stick around the whole way but that's luck sometimes fate takes you away from your beloved and football manager and you are not going to be able to go from zero to hero unless you go through that next we actually stay in scotland with taser face 
1901, the Dunfermline. line. I have brought my hometown club to being one of the best clubs in Europe, but I can't find anyone good scouting. My current players I have all found a few years ago and are all very good. I keep rejecting 100 plus million dollar bids for players like Enrique, Voigt, and Andalovic because I can't find anyone who I would want to spend money on, but I feel as if 160 million is a very generous price for Voigt. I'm afraid that if I sell them and then have no clue what to spend the money on, please save my save. So after this one, we have the save where the person's about to quit unless I can save it. But in this save, I see myself. And that is why I do believe this is a save that needs saving. You hit a point in a save where you actually don't know what direction to go, but I see myself in it because this is a person that wants to keep playing. You have 123 million in the balance. Your transfer budget is 90 million. The board keeps setting these. You get a certain amount of money. It's under percent, then it goes down to 60% sort of things. In the Scottish Premier League, you've won seven consecutive titles and you're off to a barn burning start again. And rather improbably, you have not won the Champions League, even though you may the quarterfinal, semifinal, semifinal, and final. I'll be honest, I've intake in the information from your team, and I have a piece of advice for you, and that is stay the course. Your team is good enough to win the Champions League. This Ratko Angelovic guy from Serbia is one of the best players I've ever seen on FM. And when you see guys like this, guys that no matter what team on the world they are on, they are a four and a half or five star player, you never let them go. I don't care how much money you get offered, you do not let them go unless you have another person like that that can take that position. And very rarely are you in that situation. But you really just gotta keep these guys on long contracts, what you're doing, and then wait them out or just dump all these guys that want a new deal to reflect their ability because they're bad and it's annoying me that they're all in the dynamics clogging things up. But for the one I've been waiting to do the whole time, 1T Savvy at Stadrim. I've hit a terrible rut since the last season and a half after playing really well in league all my first few seasons at the club. I've done everything I could to try and change things, change players and improve the team to the best of my abilities. But the way I was playing before suddenly is gone and I'm struggling to win and control games. I've come inches close to just giving up, and I really want to continue this save, but I'm simply lost on how to fix this run. So you started out, you were you know, 14th, then up to 7th, 14th, 3rd, 2nd, and then down to 7th, started the season losing three of your first four, which I understand that's like the point of meltdown. You lost at home to Troyes, also Lyon away to Strasbourg. At home, you beat, or like away, you beat Nice 5-0, so you're sitting there like, why are we not better. My first observation just clicking around is these dynamics not very good. When you have a locker room atmosphere like this, you're not in a good spot. The players don't respond well to your team talks. They don't respond well to pressure and you need to do a better job of keeping them happy. I'm talking praising training every week when somebody puts in a good training performance. You're making avoidable mistakes like trying to tout Sifo Niat or Sipio Niati out to other clubs. It tells you when they're gonna get mad about that stuff and you powered through it and did it anyways. Now assessing the ability of your players, you do definitely have a couple of players that at the, they're, they're at the ability level where they should be able to help you push for European spots in Ligue 1. Guys like Roman Pavelka has got a great physical profile even though he's not a great goal scorer. Same with Tangi Gunshard, not an excellent creative force or goal scorer, but definitely a freaky athlete that can put pressure on the opposition. I also kind of like this striker, Mario Cesar. He's an excellent passer and works hard, but I think you're missing a crucial type of player. Who the heck is supposed to score the goals on this team? That sounds oversimplified, right? But you've loaned in Florian Paletti. Florian Paletti then promptly fractured his lower back and is out for a month. You don't have any line pushing people. You've got two forwards that like to drop in. And then if you do that, you need midfielders that are going to go forward and score. And it's not Oriana. And it's not Alexander Ikoff Ferdin. I like the fact that you're looking for loans, but there is a key here that I've identified that's a massive problem for your club. You don't want to sell anybody and it's a crime. The value of Mihal Duric is inflated because you just signed him. I, I know that is how it works, but this value is a rough estimate of the value that you have in your team. And then when you look at your finances, you have less than 50 million in the bank and you have a transfer budget of 5 million. Sweetheart, that will not do. You have so much value in your team and you have none of it on the bottom line. That is a crime. Because as good as you think your team might be, which it might be good enough or fourth or third in the league when you're getting your luck and you have your team atmosphere together and your players playing together, 
it is not good enough to get where you want to be. That's beating PSG and being the best team ever. And you need money in the transfer budget. And you're going to need to sell, whether it's Mihail Duric. My recommendation would be Alexander Ludovats because this guy, even though he's great, he, he's a very good player. He is who he is. And his value is 70 to 80 million. And look at your transfer retention. You have 100%. My boy at Dunfermline doesn't have that luxury. The 100% gets cut off. I don't have that luxury. At Florensdorfer, it gets cut off too. I'm at 60%. If you sell Alexander Ludovats, even on the low end for $70 million, that is five to six top of the line wonder kids that you can develop as part of your system. I don't think Mahal Durich is actually going to turn into a super world-class player, but you can buy like five more of them with one sale. You are not taking advantage of the opportunity to up your balance, your transfer budget to a competitive level. You have a lot of value in your team. You have no value in the club. Your scouting is also a mess. You don't need to scout all of France. You've got 500 people in scouting priorities. You only have 11 scouts, right? Like the, there's no reason for that. That's going to take a long time depending on your previous knowledge of these players it could take over a year you also don't have any scouting assignments i'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and say this was glitched but you're you're not really scouting at all you need to be nation scouting you need to be looking at national teams and you need to give your scouts a chance to actually finish anything and if you're scouting all of france you're missing out on all the wonder kid hotbeds that are out there scandinavia eastern europe central europe breaking south america you're not looking at anybody outside of france and 95 percent of the guys the french guys that are worth anything are going to be much more expensive than the guys you find elsewhere you might find one diamond in the rough doing this you could find 10 doing something else and if you sell one of your guys you'll have the money to sign them i can tell you one thing for sure don't give up on this save you have an excellent foothold you've got a great collection a nucleus of a couple of players that can compete at a very high level you'll have to sell some of them to help out the other ones get to where they can go. And I wish you the absolute best of luck. I wish you all the best of luck. And if you want to just keep binging on YouTube all day, here is me saving some more of your saves. Do enjoy. Right there.